Hi everyone, I'm Paula Harvey at Tejon Ranch Conservancy and today we're going to do a lesson on setting up your science notebook. Before we start, I want to talk just briefly about the history of science notebooks. Throughout all time, people have been using notebooks in the field to research, to question, to record the things that they've been learning about. And so science notebooks are currently being used by scientists and naturalists and students like you. So when we're talking about going out in the field and working with a science notebook, there's certain equipment that you need. Well, one is a notebook. It can be something, anything, as simple as a small hard-sided notebook, a composition book, which is probably what you're going to be using, spiral three-ring notebook, any of those kinds of things. It can also be something expensive and fancy with blank pages that you can paint on. But at this point, anything that you want to use will work. You need a pencil, just a regular graphite pencil, and you'll need an eraser. Now, beyond that, you might want to have a set of colored pencils. There's all other kinds of things that you can use in your um, journaling, but those are your basics. Don't forget, you're going to need a sharpener. All right, now that we've talked about supplies, let's talk about how to set up your notebook. I'm going to use this notebook today to show you how to set yours up. And I want you to set it up at the same time as I'm setting mine up. So starting with your notebook, open it up to the first page. Skip a couple pages. You might need that for another time. So just start your notebook about the third page in. And I want you to start with a table of contents. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to write table of contents in your notebook. So go ahead and do that. Now that you've written table of contents, go to your next page, leave that side blank and leave the back of it blank, go to this next page, start numbering your pages. Do it front and back, so this one will be page one, the back side will be page two. So now what I want you to do is put this video on pause and number your entire journal. Now that you have your entire notebook numbered, you're going to your first page, page one. And I want you to head it, Science Notebook Headings. So on page one, what we're going to be doing is just putting in the instructions for the things that go into each journal page. That way, when you get to a journal page, if you can't remember everything, you can go back to page one and I'll tell you what's in there. So under Science Notebook Headings, I want you to write a little dash here and then write date, comma, day, comma, time, comma, season. Under that, I want you to write location, comma, habitat. Now, a habitat would be like an oak woodland or desert or grasslands. After that, I want you to write weather. And the type of weather that we're going to record will be temperature, percent of cloud cover. So 
If it's a cloudy day and it's raining, that's 100%. But if you see parts of the sky, it might be 80% cloud cover because 20% would be sky. And then the third thing is wind speed. How windy is it? Do you have a little breeze that might be one or two miles per hour, or is it a gusty wind that might be eight or nine miles per hour? So those are the three things under weather that you're going to put in. So pause this video and make sure you have all of these things in. All right, so you're finished with page one and it should look something like this. So it says, Science Notebook Headings, which is the title of this page, Date, Day, Time and Season, Habitat, Location, Weather, Temperature, Percent Cloud Cover, and Wind Speed. Now turn to page two. Title page two, each journal entry includes, and then use the ellipses, dot, dot, dot on the top of page two, okay? Let's pause this video and complete that. All right, now that you have your title at the very top, write the following. A, B, C, comma, one, two, three, comma, and then draw a box and then put a couple mountains in and a moon. That means a picture. Now, under this, write again A, B, C. Now we're going to go into detail about what A, B, C means. This is the writing part of your journal. You're going to be doing three different things in your journal. You're going to be writing, you're going to be measuring, and you're going to be drawing or sketching. So the ABC is the writing part. And so when you're doing the writing, you're going to be taking notes. You're going to be writing descriptions. You're going to be labeling your diagrams. For instance, if you draw a plant, maybe a flower with leaves, you would go petal, stem, leaf, those would be the labels. And then you're also going to write reflections. Reflections happen at the end of your journaling where you're going to look back at what you did for the day and you're going to write a variety of different kinds of things. We'll go more into what a reflection looks like later. All right, underneath that, so all of this should be in your journal now. Underneath that, I want you to write, I notice ellipses, I wonder, this reminds me of. Okay, make sure you have all of this on page two so far. There's more. Okay, so you should have all of this in your journal now. So this is what it looks like in my journal. I even included the little picture of the flower with the labels so I can remember how to label things. So I want to talk a little bit about I notice, I wonder, this reminds me of. When you are journaling, you want to do a lot of observations. So you might look at a tree and say, I notice this is the only tree in the meadow. I notice that this tree doesn't have a whole lot of leaves. Then you might want to say, I wonder if the reason it doesn't have leaves is because it loses its leaves in the winter. Then you'll go on and say, I notice there are a lot of birds in the tops of the trees. 
I notice that there's not much growing around the base of the tree. I wonder if something is eating the things that are in the base of the tree. I wonder if it's underground. This reminds me of is the connection that you make with your prior experiences. And that helps with memory. So you might look at the tree and say, this reminds me of the tree that's in my best friend's backyard. Or you might say, this reminds me of the day that I was out having a picnic and there was a tree very similar to this. What's really important about I notice, I wonder, and this reminds me of, you're going to do a lot of observations. So you don't just write one thing. You write as many things as you can think of. You need to ask lots of questions. So you're going to write many things that you wonder about. Maybe all at one time as you're doing the observations, but it also could be throughout the entire day when you're doing your journaling. And this reminds me of, you want several of those things as well. Okay, we're now going to go into the one, two, three. The one, two, three is the metrics, the measurements. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the one, two, three, the metrics. Met metrics means the measurements. And since my journal is about three quarters full on this side, I'm going to go on to page three to write about the one, two, three, the metrics. So the measurements. are going to be as many different things as you can think of to measure and quantify what you're studying. So it might be the size, it might be the height, the length, the weight, the distance. If you're talking about a particular place, it could be the GPS coordinates. And there are some really cool apps that you can put on your smartphone if you have a smartphone that will give you the GPS coordinates, will give you direction like a compass. Additionally, you might be looking at the percentage of coverage. You know, we talked about that when we talked about the heading on your journal. The percentage of coverage might be the percentage of clouds, but it could also be the percentage in a grassy area, how much grass is growing in uh, an area and how many blank spaces there are. So if you looked at a small area of your lawn, for example, if your lawn is growing very thick, it might be 100%. But if you have gopher holes or you have some sand or rocks growing there, Maybe it's 50% coverage of plants, all right? So these are some of the different kinds of metrics that you are going to want to include. So make sure you've written these in your journal. Okay, so the third element in your journal will be a picture or a diagram. So I want you to write the picture, the icon for, for a picture, and then write picture or diagram. When you do this, you're going to start with a pencil. Sketch it lightly. So if you don't like it, you can erase it and you won't see it. And then finish with colored pencils. If it's a diagram, don't forget you're going to label it. If it's a picture or a drawing, that won't need to be labeled. Okay, um, after you've written that, we're going to talk briefly about reflections, which is the last thing that you do in your journal. Okay, so the last part of any journal entry, every time you write a journal entry, will be your reflection. 
Now, reflection simply is looking back on what you did, how you feel about it, what you've learned, and it's very loose, so you can do almost anything in a reflection. So, you're going to look back on what you learned, and what you still want to know. This can be anything. A diary entry, short story, a poem, could be a drawing, it could be a question for next time. All right, pause your video, make sure you've written all these things down for reflection. All right, now that you've written all of the instructions for how to do journaling, I want you to go back and I want you to box all of your subtitles. And so it should look like this. I have each journal entry includes, there's ABC, there's one, two, three metrics, there's reflection. That way, when I go back, because I can't remember what a reflection is, I can go back to page three of my journal and see reflection and read it. Easy to find. Once you've done that, go back to your table of contents. And in your table of contents, write what's on each page. What's on page one? Science notebook headings. Write that under page one in your table of contents. What's on page two? Each journal entry includes. What I would do, because I'm using both two and three, on page one, I'm going to write my title. On page two, I'm also going to put a comma and write page three, and then write each journal entry includes. Okay, so here's my table of contents. I put page on the top. Underneath it, I put one, science notebook headings, two, three, each journal entry includes. So here's page one, science notebook headings, and here's page two and three, each journal entry includes. All right, we're ready to get started journaling. In our next video, we're going to be journaling something very interesting. All right. So let's summarize what we learned today about what to put into your science notebook or nature journal. We're setting up the notebook that'll be in there. It will include your table of contents. Each journal entry includes a heading. All of those things, the date, the time, the weather, the location. ABC, I notice, I wonder, this reminds me of. This is the writing part. One, two, three. This is the metrics. How did you measure what you're looking at? Number four, it's the picture, the sketch or the diagram. And number five, the last thing that you do whenever you're journaling is the reflection. We're ready to go.